What's up everybody, Rob here. So this is um, kind of an off the cuff video. I do have some notes here that I took down just to make sure I have a quote here that I'm gonna be reading off in a little bit. Um, just beyond that though, it's completely you know off the top of my head. I'm gonna be rambling and incoherent. You should be used to this sort of thing. So yeah, anyway, here you go. So a couple days ago, I was on Twitter and there was a person who was saying that, um, that we have it all wrong and that people like today, in today's day and age, we look back on people in the past and we say, wow, we're really soft today, we're really weak. People in the past were much tougher than we we are. And he's saying, no, that's wrong. Because he being, he said he's over six feet tall and he weighs whatever pounds and he benches this much or whatever he, whatever he said, I don't remember and I don't really care either. Um, he would do actually extremely well in the Middle Ages. So if he were to, you know, um, be transported into the past, Middle Ages, ancient world, whatever, because of his size and strength, he would just absolutely dominate. Is this true or not? Um, well, no, not really. Um, and let me explain why. Now, first off, the initial premise is actually true. People today are much larger and stronger. We don't have to deal with malnutrition like we had in the past. That is 100% true. People are much bigger. They're not, um, they don't have stunted growth. Actually, a lot of people are overly, um, overly fed. Uh, what I mean is we have an obesity problem, which is a fantastic problem to have on a top massive timeline. You know, we have an overabundance of food. Um, but that is true. Basic premise, yes, people are larger and stronger today than they were previously. Uh, but thing is, I think that comes down to people misunderstanding how warfare was actually conducted and how wars actually work in, well, even today, but especially in previous eras. You see, uh, now we're going to assume here that uh, the person in question, ever, the, the time traveler, you know, a guy traveling into the past to, you know, dominate back the, uh, back in the past. Um, that this person is equally skilled with a sword or an axe or whatever it is. So it's not like a skill difference or anything like that. And also other factors like no language barrier and all that. That's all incidental. Basically, what we're trying to determine is, it does the size and strength of a modern person really translate well to domination on a medieval or, uh, say, pre-industrial battlefield? And I don't think so. Because... We have a problem, and he, this individual had a problem as well, um, making the distinction between an athlete and a warrior. The two are very, very different things. The ancient Greeks made this distinction, and I'm going to be explaining that to you right now. Um, you see, we are bigger and stronger, that is true, and we also understand how the body works. So things like, um, you know, different physical training, like do this exercise, this this rep range, um, do all this kind of stuff like we are more physically fit we are more physically developed than people in the um, in pre-industrial eras and because of this we in a one-on-one -on -one fight like if we were just be transported there you fight a guy or you fight a battle would it help yeah absolutely being bigger and stronger than your opponent absolutely does help don't tell me it doesn't say oh strength means nothing it's all about skill and technique yeah but if you're equally two people equally skilled you know have the same technique but one guy, you know, has like, you know, 80 pounds of muscle on his opponent, that guy wins. Sorry, that's just how it is. Size and strength absolutely do help. You have like a mace or, you know, a bardiche and axe like this, and you can swing it that much harder, especially if the person's wearing any kind of armor, padded cloth, whatever it is. Yeah, being able to hit with more force, you know, being bigger and stronger, absolutely. However, and this is, this is the ultimate point I'm trying to make, is that wars are not won, um by one-on-one -on -one clashes like that. Or like, that's not how it works. You see, what happens is 99% um, of warfare is based on not fighting. Yes, you're marching to a battlefield or where a battlefield could be, and then you realize that the battle's not gonna be there because the enemy slipped away in the middle of the night. So you gotta go marching after them. And then you go, They re then you realize you go, um, oh, they slipped behind a city, behind city walls, and now you gotta siege. So now you gotta sit there for a couple weeks outside the city walls, just, just, you know, hanging out over there. And then you realize, oh, there's a relief army, so you've got to go march back, you know, some other direction to, to confront the relief army before it, you know, it, and all that kind of stuff. So basically, you're not fighting. So what are you doing during this time? Well, you're marching a lot, and you're not eating well, because logistics during this era did not exist. Um, really until, I mean, they started a little bit in the 1600s, but really, until really the 1900s. Yeah, it, it depends on the army and the place and the circumstances. But basically, like, we're talking like 1600s back, you know, Middle Ages, ancient world. The logistic system is you go out into the countryside and find something that's edible. Like, that that's your logistic system. You lived off the land. Uh, it was unreliable. 
uh, the, the Romans did have a logistic system. That is, that is true. They they were very good at this, and that's actually one of the reasons why they were um, as successful as they were. But basically speaking, generally speaking, though, um, you want something to eat, you go find it, you scrounge out, out in the countryside. So, uh, what does this have to do with things? Well, an athlete cannot operate this way. Somebody who's big, strong, big, strong, you know, lots of muscles. Um, that stuff, muscles are very, very... Um, metabolically expensive they require a lot of calories just to maintain never mind to make them bigger um, and you're not gonna be able to get that on a campaign you're not gonna be able to get that for any length of time especially in um, pre-industrial time where pretty much everybody had to deal with at least once in their life a famine now famine doesn't necessarily mean that people were going hungry people weren't necessarily starving to death but you didn't have quite enough like you wanted a second helping well we don't have enough for that everybody dealt with that at least once in their lifetime and um, the point I'm trying to say is that uh, food supplies really, under the best of circumstances, uh, were limited to say the least. And especially on a campaign, an army on campaign, you're going to be running into those kinds of hardships. And uh, the ancient Greeks actually knew this. So he, th this individual that, uh, on Twitter was thinking in terms of an athlete, he's bigger, he's stronger, but a warrior and an athlete um, actually required two different skill sets. Now this is, and I'm quoting here from Plutarch's Lives, uh, the life of Philopomeon. Yeah, Philopomeon. And um, this is uh, Plutarch's Lives, and um, and I quote here, uh, he was a, um, a leader of one of the Greek city-states, and he um, he said, and I quote, they told him, and it was the truth, that the habit of bodily and mode of life for an athlete and a soldier were, and a soldier were totally different and particularly that their diet and training were not the same since one required much sleep continuous surfeit of food and fixed periods of activity and repose in order to preserve or improve their condition which the slightest influence or the least departure from routine is apt to change for the worse whereas the soldier ought to be conversant with all sorts of in irregularity and all sorts of inequality, and above all, should accustom, him, accustom himself to endure a lack of food easily and as easily lack of sleep. Upon hearing this, Philopomeon, I, sorry, I can't pronounce things, Philopomeon not only shunned athletics himself and derided them, but also in later times as commander banished them from the army, all forms of them, with every possible mark of reproach and dishonor, on the ground that they rendered useless for the inevitable struggle of battle men who would otherwise be most serviceable. Basically what we try to say is that an athlete, much like modern day athletes, if you're familiar with fitness at all, um, it doesn't matter what it is, it could be combat sports, it could be bodybuilding, weightlifting, anything like that, swimming, track and field, you have a very specific strict routine you must follow. You go through, I'm going to use just say weightlifting as an example because it's something I'm most familiar with. You lift weights on certain days, you go through a certain number of sets, a certain number of reps, certain at certain weights and percentages of your one rep maximum. Um, you go through these things, you have to go through certain recovery, basically you have to um, uh, stretch and um, you know do other sorts of uh, recovery activities. And also you need sleep, uh, seven to nine hours a day. And on top of this, you also need uh, uh, the right amount of food. You need the right nutrition, specifically for muscle growth, approximately, and there's been a lot of controversy on this, but basically we'll just say the general rule is one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and that's more or less what you need. Now, um, you need to do this consistently over the period of months, over the period of years, in order to gain the benefits of it. Now this individual, a modern person, would basically have those benefits because as they are athletes, they have you know a structured life. You wake up in the morning at X time, you do whatever training you have to do, you eat whatever meals you have to eat, you get the right calories in, you get your right macros and the right proportions of proteins to fats to uh, carbohydrates, you get the, um, um, the other, the micronutrients like the zinc and the magnesium and all the other stuff you've got to do. That's okay, that's great. Okay, so what does this have to do with a warrior? Well, like like you said here, well, you're in a war zone. E even in an ancient um, or medieval context like this, um, you're not getting that. First off, in the ancient world, like I said before, in the ancient world or the medieval world, you're not really... Um, uh, you're, you'd be hard-pressed to get the right amount of food to begin with. So that's, that's an issue there. But um, on... 
but while they're on campaign, you're marching around. Like, do you think you're going to be getting exactly one gram of protein per pound of body weight per day? Do you really think you're going to be getting that? I mean, you're, you'd be lucky to get anything out here. Here's like, you know, a piece of bread, like, you know, like a baseball sized piece of bread. That's, that's your meal. You're lucky to get that. Okay. And then, oh, you're going to get eight hours of sleep. You really, you're gonna, you think that's going to happen? No, you're on watch, dude. And if fine, you're not on watch, okay? You think you can get in a nice, luxurious bed so you can, you know, recover and, you know, get your muscles, you know, get them the proper recovery for that sort of thing? No, you're sleeping on the ground in all kinds of weather. It's brutally hot. It's freezing cold. It's raining. It's sleet. It's horrible wet. You're only going to be doing it for like four or five hours a night. Maybe, maybe not. And it's not like peaceful, restful sleep. You're in like, you know, you're in enemy territory. Yeah, you've got guards out on the, on, on the perimeter. What if the guards, you know, you're, it's going to be in your mind. What if the guards, um... Well, if the guards, you know, get their throat slit and were attacked in the middle of the night, that's going to be in the back of your mind. It's not, you know, you're not going to be sleeping peacefully in a nice climate controlled restful environment. You're going to be, you know, surrounded basically by the enemy. You're going to be stressed out. You're not going to be getting enough food. You're not going to be getting enough, um, uh, the proper nutrition. Um, you're not going to be getting the rest and recovery. And also muscles do atrophy. So yeah, oh, I can bench this much and I can deadlift this much and I can squat this much. Do you think you're bringing a squat rack with you on campaign? Do you really think you're bringing that with you? I mean, come on. No, you're going to be carrying your armor. You're going to be carrying your weapons equipment. If you're rich and wealthy enough, you can either put it on like a pack mule or um, like a, an animal of some kind, maybe throw it in a wagon. But basically like you carry that stuff on you and you just, and you do think you have time? No, dude, you're going to be like, no, you get stuff. You're a soldier on duty. You got to march. And what if there's a force march? You're definitely not doing that. And then you got to, um, <coughs> um, you know, you got to cook whatever food you do manage to scrounge up. You you have watch duties. You have if you're in the Roman army, stuff like latrine duty and whatever else you got to deal with. You know, you you have actual duties as a soldier. You're not going to be spending time, you know setting up a weight set and doing stuff. You might be able to do some body weight stuff if you have some spare time, but you're probably gonna be so exhausted from marching like 15, 20 miles in horrifyingly bad weather that, you know, like you're just like, you're gonna be completely drained and exhausted by the end of it. So this idea that, oh, if I get transported in the past, I'll just dominate because I'm just so much bigger and stronger than everybody. Yeah, initially, initially that is true, yes. Wait a few months, just wait a couple, you know, just wait a couple months, your muscles are gonna atrophy, you're gonna be malnourished, and you're, and you're not used to it. Cause like in our modern day world, we're, uh, we're all addicted to uh, you know cheap calories and soy and you know all that additives to food and all that stuff. You're gonna be, you're not used to, you know, suddenly you get like, you know, half the amount of calories, if that, and of usually very high carbs. I mean, some places they did a different variant, like they were able to hunt and all that stuff. But basically uh, the medieval diet or the pre-industrial diet was basically bread. Like you live, so basically you have a very high carb diet, limited amounts of meat, limited amounts of protein, and um, yeah, have fun with that. Like, what do you think is going to happen to your muscles? After, like, say if you're there, like, oh, and you're there, and you're like, oh, I'm going to take over, I'm going to become a king, and I'm going to run these people because I'm just so, you know, big and strong. No, dude. No, you're going to be, like, you're, oh, they're a bunch of malnourished peasants, like people living in the Middle Ages, they're just a bunch of malnourished peasants. What do you think you're going to be after, like, a year? after six months like what do you think is gonna happen like you're, you're eating their food too unless you have a, a constant supply of um you know uh you know protein powder dropping in on you um yeah like what, what do you think is gonna happen i'm just you know so um basically the point i'm trying to make here is that um, a warrior on a campaign needs to be able to it's actually way more important for for soldiers uh, especially in a pre-industrial context uh, they need to be tougher, physically tougher, uh, more resilient, more willing to endure hardships, more capable of enduring um, uh, changes to their routines. Like athletes need a very strict routine. Soldiers, it's like you know, any number of things can happen. Okay, we're we're actually just gonna sit here all day and do nothing. Like you're on this, you're at a siege. Okay, we're gonna spend like a couple weeks here and do nothing. Okay, now, oh, there's a relief army coming. Got to get up, everybody. Force march, you know, 20 miles, you know, that way, and we we have to do that though know, by the end of the night. Like it's. The, the, and you have to do this without any sort of planning or preparations. Scouts reporting enemies coming in form of battle lines right now. Oh wait, no, they were wrong. Okay, no, I go back to doing what you're doing. Uh, no sleep tonight. Oh uh, no, we, we wait. You're on watch. Wait, you're, you're not on watch anymore because the, the, the guy who was on watch is injured. So now this guy's got. It, there's no routine. There's no structure to it, or much less structure to it. So um, basically, any benefits you get from your athleticism is not only. 
uh, not as useful as you would think. It would evaporate eventually due to, um, you know, the fact that you're not now living the lifestyle of somebody from that era. And, more importantly, um, it would actually ultimately be a detriment because you're not used to it. Especially a modern day athlete would simply not be able to last in that type of an environment. Um, yeah, long rambling coherent way of saying that uh, modern man has a very, very distinct um, misunderstanding of warfare uh, during the pre-industrial era, about life in the pre-industrial medieval era, and has really needs to make a distinction between athleticism and being a warrior. Long rambling incoherent, sort of off the cuff, just wanted to make sure I um, got that one quote in. That's a very good quote right there about the difference. Uh, but other than that, uh, that is pretty much it for this video. Please hit the like and subscribe button. More videos coming out whenever I get around to it. Have a good day or don't have a good day. Your adults have any kind of day you want. Later.